All right, in this video, we're going to see what the magic of JSX is actually doing. So we write these HTML looking tags, but Babel is doing a whole bunch of magic to convert them to JavaScript function calls. And if we look at the docs for React, if you click on JSX in depth, it says fundamentally JSX just provides syntactic sugar, a nice little wrapper for react.create element. So when you create a button, for example, or in this case, a component called my button, it's actually generating react.create element and then a bunch of arguments that are passed in. So we can see this happen live. If we go to babel.js.io, this is the homepage for Babel, which we're using in our very simple React app. You can go to try it out. And on the left-hand side, you'll see there's a couple of options. The one we wanna check is React. So this is, a bit, it's called a preset here, and it will allow us to type React code over here, JSX, and spit out the corresponding function calls or method calls. So if we try something really simple, like we just make an H1, not a high, an H1, like this, and then we make sure to add, add in some sort of text like hi. You can see react.create elements, H1, and then null, and then hi. So we'll talk more about these actual arguments, but you can see the first one is the type of element, the type of HTML tag or element. This one we'll come back to. And then this one is the inner text that we added in, hi. But let's try something more complicated. Let me make this a bit larger too. What if we take this example? We have a div with an H1 with an image inside of it and that image has a source. So let's paste that. Okay, well, that's quite ugly formatting. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but if we ignore that part, notice what we get over here. We get a couple of create elements and they're nested. So we have react.create element with a div in it and then Inside of that div, we have another react.create element with an h1. And then the text of that is my image. And then another argument, yet again, react.create element image. And then we're passing in a source set to this URL. So this is still only, what, three elements? When we have super long forms, for example, we're getting a ton of react.create elements but we don't have to type any of it. We just type this easy to understand syntax. So one further example, let's start again with something super trivial. Let's do an H3 tag. And in this one, we'll say, I am an H3. Okay, close it. And what do we get? We get this, we can copy this. And instead of returning all of this, we could return that. And if we save and we go and look at our browser, we have the exact same thing that we got when we were using just a regular h3 tag inside of this render method. So instead of writing all of this, which you totally could do, and this is for a single element, but remember what it looked like with 10 elements, uh, or imagine what it would look like, we don't have to do any of that. We just write our HTML looking code. This is not HTML, so there are some additional rules we have to talk about. We've already discussed things like you have to have a closing tag, uh, you have to have the slash on a self-closing tag. There are a couple of other distinctions we need to go over. What I'm gonna talk about in the next video is one of the more powerful tools, which allows us to actually embed JavaScript uh, expressions into our JSX so we can create dynamic content. So that's next.